Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, MSI released their brand new handheld known as the MSI Claw and performance has been a bit lackluster since the launch a few days ago. Here on the channel, we've actually taken a look at both of the variants they offer. One with the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H and the Core Ultra 5 135H. You know, with the new iGPU from Intel, I think there's a lot of optimizations that need to be had. But in this video, I figured we'd just go ahead and up the performance using an external GPU. Now, one great feature that the MSI Claw has built in is Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4. That way we can easily connect an eGPU. And there's some really nice ones out there on the market right now. But for this video, we're gonna be using the new 1X GPU. You could also go with the GPD G1. They've got the same GPU, different enclosure. This one does have a few more features like the fact that we can actually add an extra M.2 NVMe SSD in the bottom here. Lots of extra IO. And this actually works over USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or even Oculink. Unfortunately, the MSI Claw doesn't have Oculink, but we can still up that graphics performance by adding one of these to it. And once we connect this, basically what we're going to have here is a Radeon RX 7600 MXT connected to the MSI Claw. We can game on a larger monitor. If you want to game on the internal screen, we'll cut that performance down a bit. That's just how eGPUs work over Thunderbolt or USB 4. But connecting to a larger screen is definitely the way to go. So I've got the 1X GPU connected to my monitor. We've got our USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 cable right here. Uh, it's going to be connected over HDMI to that external display. And basically, we're just going to plug the MSI Claw right in. We've got that Thunderbolt 4 port right up top. Now, I've already installed the AMD driver. All you really need to do is head over to the website and download the correct driver. Remember, we've got the Radeon RX 7600 MXT. Now, another cool feature that we have here with the 1X GPU is the fact that we've got a turbo boost button up front. We've also got some adjustable RGB, but that turbo boost button does come in handy because with it enabled, this GPU will run it up to 120 watts, giving us much better performance. Now, it would have been really awesome if MSI added an Oculink port here because a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 will only run it up to 40 gigs, and we do have a 40 gig protocol Thunderbolt 4 port here. So performance will be cut down as if we were to plug this into something that was much faster, but it's still going to outperform that iGPU. Okay, got everything set up, and uh, real quick, I just want to give you a look here. From MSI Center, which is the control center built in with that MSI Claw, we've got our performance profile. I'm going to be in extreme performance. So this can boost up to around 40 to 43 watts every once in a while while gaming. We don't have to worry about battery because we're plugged into the eGPU, sending plenty of power over there. Another thing I mentioned here was that uh, 7600 MXT can run it up to 120 watts. And right here, you can see, got a real nice clock on it. We're at 100, 106. Some games can max this out, but uh, yeah, up to 120 watts with this external GPU. Not too bad. So far, everything's been working really well. We've got our AMD X-Connect technology, and we've got access to AMD software, so we can enable HyperRx or uh, Radeon Super Resolution if we need it. I don't think we will with this, but again, we're not running this GPU at the maximum performance because we're running over USB 4. But so far, I've been seeing some decent performance out of this little setup. And uh, one thing I actually like to do when I connect eGPUs is disable the internal iGPU. And some games will auto detect and go right to that iGPU. With all of my testing, I did disable the Arc iGPU. Plus, with that off, we don't have to worry about background tasks using that GPU taking power from the CPU. So in performance mode with this setup, again, we can boost up to 40 watts on that GPU, 120 on the external GPU. And the first thing we've got here are some benchmarks. And the first one we have here is 3D Mark Night Raid. With that eGPU connected, we get a total score of 46,405. Just to give you an idea, on the iGPU with the 155H and the MSI Claw, this scored a 23,957. So we've got a nice jump in performance there. Checking out Firestrike with the eGPU, 19,518, without 8,320. And finally, Time Spy with a really impressive 9,937. And just on the iGPU, 3,677. Needless to say, we can definitely expect a big boost in gaming performance. So uh, let's go ahead and move over there now. 
First up, we've got Doom Eternal, 1080p, hi, and I've always had really good luck with eGPUs in this game. Now, uh, there are some games that just don't like eGPUs, and we'll take a look at one of them that I recently found. But just to give you an idea, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered just don't like eGPUs connected over Thunderbolt or USB 4. Oculink usually works out really well, higher bandwidth, but we get a lot of stutters with some games using USB 4 and Thunderbolt. Here's Power World at 1080p high. Whenever I hit a creature for the first couple times, I did get a major stutter, and I think it's kind of shader caches going on. With this game, we don't have access to FSR, you know, without a mod for the game itself just yet. And you know, with the 7600 MXT properly connected in a laptop or something like that, we're not going to have any issues. But again, we're not using this GPU to its full potential because we've only got 40 gigs of bandwidth. And even then, we really don't have 40 gigs because uh, Thunderbolt 4, in all of my testing, I'm usually around 32 to 36. That's about the maximum. If we were using Oculink, we could do up to 63. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, using the built-in benchmark, did a pretty decent job. With high settings, looks like we're getting an average of around 98 FPS, but we do have some FSR enabled. I just used the preset. I wasn't sure if FSR would even come up. And yeah, it did kind of downscale it a bit. Forza Horizon 5 is one of those games I've actually had really good luck with using eGPUs, either Thunderbolt or Oculink. Never really had an issue, and uh, right now we're at high 1080p, no extra scaling, so we're not using FSR or anything like that. And by the end, we had an average of 94 FPS. I'm pretty sure we could do 1440 with this, but we would have to drop some of the settings down. Now, I know for a fact that even over Oculink with this eGPU, we can run this game at high 1440 over 60 FPS, but since we're using Thunderbolt, might take some of that performance away. Here's Helldivers 2, 1080p, high settings, and I haven't been able to test this with an eGPU yet, but it doesn't look like it really likes them. Another game that I always have issues with is Spider-Man Miles Morales, Spider-Man Remastered. Using a USB 4 or Thunderbolt eGPU does result in some pretty bad performance. And right now, I mean, with this setup, we should be getting well over 60, but unfortunately, it's just not working out very well. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. Now, this one's hit or miss, so sometimes I see great performance, sometimes it kind of falls on its face. But it looks like right now, I mean, it's decent. We're at 1080p high on this setup. But I did notice a lot more stutters with this game than I did with the other games that we tested so far. Another one I wanted to run a benchmark with was uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but halfway through the benchmark it would just give me a black screen. I could hear the sound in the background, and I think that was about the first time I've ever tested it on an eGPU, so I'm not sure if that's kind of an ongoing problem or not. But yeah, obviously, connecting an eGPU to the MSI Claw does work out pretty well, and I'm expecting some more driver updates from MSI and Intel. But so far, we're not seeing great performance out of the MSI Claw in handheld mode, be it the 135H version or the 155H version. In fact, uh, in some benchmarks and games, we're getting better performance out of the cheaper version. Some benchmarks and games, the higher end version with that 155H beats it out. There's really no clear winner here. And uh, until we get some more optimizations, some more driver updates from MSI, it's really hard to recommend the MSI Claw over the others on the market right now. Personally, I would just go with a Steam Deck or a Steam Deck OLED, but if you got to have that Windows experience, the ROG Ally does outperform this at lower wattages. And I'll tell you, I've done a lot of testing with the Core Ultra CPUs. If I was able to take this up to 65 watts, we could outperform the ROG Ally, but then we're only going to get like 40 minutes of battery life, maybe less than that. What I've found is, you know, we've got a lot of cores here. This 155H has 16 cores and 22 threads. It's kind of unnecessary for a handheld. We don't need that many for gaming. The iGPU here can do a great job at higher wattages, but you know, when it's in a handheld form factor and we're trying to get good battery life, running this at 15 watts like the Steam Deck, it's just not going to perform well at all. If you're interested in checking out the other videos I made on the MSI Claw, I'll leave links down below. We've got that 135H first look, the 155H first look. Next one I want to do is just kind of a benchmark comparison between the ROG Ally and the MSI Claw. Given that they both run Windows, it'd be really easy to kind of run the same benchmarks on either of them. 
and see which one really comes out ahead in battery life and overall performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or think about subscribing to the channel because I've got more coming. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the MSI Claw, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.